What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and today we're going to be talking about assault rifle aiming tips and tricks. Uh, a lot of you have been coming into my live stream chats and you've been asking, hey Toby, do you have any tips for improving your assault rifle aim or um, any tricks like that? So I decided to make a quick and dirty video explaining um, some tips and tricks of assault rifle aiming and just generally long range aiming. The first thing is, if you play on controller, I used to play on controller a lot, now I'm on mouse and keyboard, uh, but I was very good on controller. The first thing you do want to do is buy a toggle extension if you don't have one or use an extended toggle. The reason reason for that is that imagine you're trying to control like some large spaceship and park it in a docking station, right? And you're trying to do it with this tiny little toggle, this guy, right? And you move this thing like even a quarter of an inch and it moves the entire spaceship like 10 feet. I would much rather be using a toggle that is this length right here because if I move it a quarter of an inch, it's going to move just like, you know, a half a foot or something like that. I can be much more precise on a longer toggle with a larger arc. So that's my first piece of advice. Uh, my next piece of advice would be super soft trigger pulls. Whenever you're pulling your trigger and you want to improve your aim, if you're thinking about, oh, my aim is off, give really light inputs on the trigger. What that is going to do is it's going to make you put light inputs on all the buttons on the controller, but most importantly, the toggles. So if I start really pulling these triggers super soft, now I'm really, really moving that right analog stick super soft as well. And that just makes me more precise with my aim. All right, so those are my two console things. Actually, there's one more tip for consoles. Uh, get your dead zones right. So there's software now, you can set it in every game. There's dead zones on controllers, right? And that means if I push this analog stick and I release it, my character's not gonna move because I've set the dead zone properly. A lot of them will, a lot of older controllers, even new controllers will have stick drift. So if you push that toggle in, it will continue to move your character even when you let go because there's a little bit of a dead zone and some stick drift going on. So dead zones help with stick drift by a lead and it eliminate those tiny little movements uh, so that it eliminates stick drift. Uh, you want your dead zone to be as low as possible so that you're not getting that stick drift, but you're also allowed to make these tiny little toggle movements. If you can't make tiny little precise toggle movements, then it's probably time for a new controller. So those are my controller tips. Now let's just jump into like just general mentality when aiming and just some tips and tricks. So we're in this map called Red vs Blue Rumble. I've been using this as pretty much my warm up map for all zero build gameplay. And the island code is right here above my mouse. We're going to come through the rift over here and I'm going to grab just basically a standard loadout which is a Havoc pump. Uh, basically the, the standard season loadout and then I'm going to grab a red eye and then probably a twin mag AR. This map has a nice little arena down here for close range engagements. You've probably seen me play it in my other videos. But I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a little long range AR training, right? So I'm going to actually can come up one more level here. And now I can see these guys and I'm just going to start tagging them with my AR. So this allows you to like kind of practice your AR aim a little bit. Okay, so now that we're up here, I want to talk about something called lazy aim. I call it lazy aim. And what that is, is basically just looking at your enemy. I'm just looking at my enemy. I'm just taking shots. You know, I'm not like... Uh, like, I'm, I just can't hit my shots, you know? Well, the reason you can't hit your shots, guys, is because you're not focused on your enemy. You're not focusing in and putting your reticle on their body and concentrating super intently, right? So that is what you want to avoid. You want to avoid just looking at your enemy. You want to really focus, like... Uh, you know, there's that phrase, aim small, miss small. That's kind of the solution for lazy aim. You ever been in a fight where you felt like, dang, I had that guy dead and then I lost? Or like, I thought I hit that shot, but I guess I didn't. You go back and you watch it and you missed. That's lazy aim. You just thought you had the fight in the bag and you got lazy. You weren't as concentrated. You weren't as focused. It happens to the best of us. So before you get into a fight, long range or close range, be cognitive about aiming at your opponent. Look at their body, look at your reticle, put your reticle over their body, pull the trigger. Now, that is something I'm gonna recommend for long ranges. Long range engagements, you do wanna line up your reticle over your opponent's body. So I'm kind of looking at my enemy, but I'm also looking at my reticle and I'm just lining that reticle up 
and put it over their body. At close range engagements, you're not really caring about the reticle placement. You know kind of where your reticle is, it's center screen. You should mostly be looking at the enemy. Mid range and close range, you're more looking at your enemy, but at long ranges, you actually are kind of looking at your enemy, and but mostly looking at your reticle because your reticle has got to be over them to do damage. It's such a precise thing at long ranges that you really want to make sure that reticle is over your enemy. And now the next tip I want to talk about is strafe aiming. Okay, so a lot of players will just mostly aim with their right toggle. They'll go out here and they'll just go, okay, like I I'm on mouse and keyboard, so it doesn't make as big of a difference, but like they go like this, right? And they're like, I, I can't hit anything. Well, it's because you're not using enough strafe aiming. Your left stick on your controller, I play Halo, so I always relay back to Halo. Most of your aiming is with your left stick. You are moving your crosshair very, very precisely over people with your left stick by doing this, right? Like that makes really minor adjustments. Look how small of an adjustment I can make on this guy before I absolutely cook him. <laughs> Basically at these long ranges, right? The right aim, the right stick is far too sensitive to be making those small adjustments. So you wanna make those small adjustments with the left stick. So move your left stick um, back and forth to put your reticle over the enemy and then pull the trigger once it crosses them. So that's left stick aiming and that's something you should really be doing at long ranges where you have to be super precise. All right, now really quickly, let's talk about the Red Eye Assault Rifle. Red Eye Assault Rifle is the most consistent, dependable weapon in the game. You can hit people across the map. If you can see a player, you can hit them with the Red Eye if your aim is good, right? That's just like, that's just the honest truth about it. Now, the reason that most people prefer the DMR, or at least most controller players, is the DMR has higher aim assist. And, you know, there's no shame in that. I played Destiny 2, I always preferred guns with higher aim assist, you know? And generally those guns are kind of like middle pack of damage, middle pack of efficiency, but they, you know, have really good aim assist and aim assist is really helpful on controller but if you want to improve your aim guys if you want to get better at aim use the red eye assault rifle for one it's going to make you a better aimer and for two you can actually hit people across the map a dmr right like i wouldn't be able to consistently hit these shots with a dmr sure this guy yeah he's standing still i could hit him but people that are moving around all fast right like say this guy right here or this guy down here i'm not going to be landing these shots with a dmr i'm just not I'm not going to be consistently doing that at long range. I'm not going to be as effective at long range with a DMR as I am a red eye. So that's just kind of like why I prefer the red eye, why pretty much everyone at a high competitive level uses the red eye and no one uses the DMR. It, it's just a more dependable, consistent gun. It's hit scan. It can hit people out of the air like that. So yeah, that's that. Um, Practice with a red eye. If you're not good, if you feel like you're not good with a red eye, unfortunately, that means you feel like your aim's not good. So improve your aim by using the red eye and come in a practice map like this, put in the, you know, put in the time, put in the work to get your aim to a level that you are happy with and, you know, just small improvements every day. And also the last thing I want to note about the red eye is you shouldn't hold down the trigger. Look how much this gun climbs if you hold down the trigger. And that doesn't seem that bad if you're fighting it, right? But it's really hard to fight recoil and aim very precisely at long ranges. So people ask me all the time, like, oh, do you hold that trigger down? I'm like, no, I never hold the trigger down on the red eye. It's always uh, tapping the trigger for a few reasons. Um, one is because I just feel like I have a lot more intent when I'm pulling the trigger bullet by bullet, I'm gonna save more ammo and I'm gonna hit more shots because I'm really timing my shots. When the, when the reticle crosses the enemy, I'm gonna pull that trigger and I'm gonna time it. Whereas if I'm just holding down the trigger, right? Like, I'm just not being that intent. I'm just, I just don't have that much intent with my shots. I'm wasting ammo. I'm probably gonna get caught on a reload and not kill a guy. Pretty much always pull the trigger. Never really hold it down. That's the gist of it. And the last thing I'll say is stay away from the Havoc Assault Rifle. Havoc Assault Rifle, it's just not good, guys. It's not. The only reason that it has a decent utility is at mid-range and the fact that it suppresses your uh, sound. It actually only allows enemies to see your gunshots from 90 meters instead of 260 meters. But... When it comes down to it, you want to hit your shots and you have to be completely standing still.
to hit someone with this gun from this range. So it's just, it's just not a good gun. It's got way too much bloom and it's just not that good of a gun. So don't use the Havoc Assault Rifle, use a red eye. And if you can't use a red eye, then use the DMR if there's no red eyes available. I guess the last tip I guess I'll leave you with is strafing and duck shotting when you're aiming. It's super important to be strafing, first of all. Like if you're in a one-on-one -on -one engagement and your enemy's really putting fire on you, definitely be using strafe. Definitely be using good cover. You want to practice these cover peaks, right? Like, it's hard to give a good example out here because people are going to get in my in my face up in my business. But, like, head glitches like this are super, super helpful. Make it so people only can see your head. It's very difficult to just hit a small, small target, especially when you're getting shot at. Use good cover. If this is my enemy right here, I'm going to come out. I'm going to be peeking, taking a couple shots, come back into cover, pop around the other side of cover. Just basically don't stand out in the middle and be standing still, especially. You want to be strafing back and forth, using peaks, you know, taking peak shots at your enemy. Now the other side, a couple shots, and just don't give them like a nice easy shot at you. And then you can also, if you're out in the open and you have no cover, then you really got to work in that duck shot, right? The duck shot helps a lot at long to mid range if you're just stuck in the middle without cover because a lot of people will aim at upper chest and they'll often miss when you start ducking it's just a fact that it's really hard to hit someone when they're ducking like this guy is going to miss me so i covered this in my movement video but basically like ducking when aiming it throws off their aim because it's harder to hit you but it also throws off their mental game because it kind of like tells them like oh you're a different type of player you're like ducking while aiming that's kind of crazy looking this guy's a sweat right so so there's really two aspects to it uh one is you actually are a harder target to hit but the other aspect is that it kind of scares people it makes them think that you're a try hard a sweaty player uh and they just don't really, you know, they get a little scared. And they're like, oh, shoot, I might lose this fight. This guy's ducking my shots. He's doing crazy stuff. So learn to duck shot um, in open fields and stuff like that when you don't have cover. You don't really need to use it when you have cover uh, unless you want to pull off, like, head glitches like this, you know? Like, see how people can't really see much of my body right here because I'm ducked? You can do that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, it's definitely good for that. But yeah, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I respond to every single comment. If you just like found something super helpful, I'd love to hear about that in the comments. If you found something that you feel like helped your gameplay, I love hearing that stuff. That's what I want to do. I want to help you guys out. I'm sorry this isn't my typical 100% effort guide that I usually put literally 30 or 40 hours into. This is, you know, a one day thing. I'm trying to make faster content that has, you know, 75 to 80% of the quality, but has just as much much value as my long form stuff because that long form stuff that like hero content takes forever to make and I can make something like this in a day and maybe just deliver just as much value. If you have not subscribed guys, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I've got a, a library full of videos that are aimed at helping you become a better zero build player. Check out my must watch playlist. That's all my best videos for basically improving your game as fast as possible. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out.